Welcome to another edition of the Litigation Psychology Podcast brought to you by Courtroom Sciences. I am Dr. Bill Kanaski, and with me, um, very good friend uh, and uh, regular um, podcast participant, uh, Mr. Mr. Doug Marcello. Doug, the reason we have you on today, well, we have a couple uh, uh, reasons, but uh, I know that you've been doing some speaking on this new list of judicial hellholes. That just came out and now th this list has been around for quite a while and i know that they update it um pr fairly routinely um yeah. and i'd like to get your your thoughts on that because i know i work uh in, in a lot of those areas but when you when the, when it first came out um kind of what were your initial impressions um uh, of this list you know uh, having worked with this over the years and again uh, this is done by the american tort reform foundation and each year I'll interview Lauren Sheets Gerald, who's the person who uh, puts it out and does the work on it. Uh, we've seen a consistency in the states, but there's some variations. And when I looked at it this year, Bill, it was kind of like, well, let's step back from the geography mm -hmm. and let's look at kind of the why, the common denominators between some of these. Uh, you know, the, the, the key thing, and, and one of the things I did in looking at the full report is to go back and kind of refresh myself in terms of how do you get on the list? <laughs> and the yeah. gist of it is, as you can appreciate, is that these are the jurisdictions we'd look for a continuity of uh, jurisprudence across the country. You know, you go to court, you should have at least a decent bandwidth in terms of what the options or what the potential are. These are the ones who are outside of that bandwidth. Yeah. And when we look at some of them, some of the states have similar features that put them on this list. For example, and this is right in your wheelhouse, uh, the notion of anchoring. You yeah. know, New, New York and uh, Georgia in particular made their way on the list, among other reasons, for the anchoring. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, I mean, I was looking forward to your thoughts in terms of, you know, what effect that has and how it does it. Because we're fortunate in Pennsylvania, uh, the plaintiff attorney cannot put a number out in front of the jury. In fact, we can't even plead a general damage number. That's huge. In the plea. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely huge. Ab absolutely yeah. huge. Um um, and a huge advantage to the to the to the defense. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. Um, these um, and I don't. I'm not sure if this is a ranked order list or just a list. Um, I can't really uh, tell, but I'm they, I'm looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they rank them, Bill, okay. in terms of you know worst to first type of thing. And uh, you know, just like our beloved Phillies, uh, <laughs> Philadelphia and Pennsylvania came in second. But hey, you know, we're, we're up there. <laughs> <laughs> very common, very common for those uh, Pennsylvania teams. Number one, right, being being Georgia. I mean, yeah. now I can see why it's on the list uh, because, particularly the Atlanta metro area, um, it's the birthplace of a reptile theory, um, right. and we know what goes on there. Uh, and very tough juries down there, and there have been several nuclear verdicts down there uh, recently. That's no surprise. I guess I'm surprised that. It finished number number one, but um, you know that's that's definitely um, a, a place where things are red hot and continue to be red hot. And we see, yeah. uh, I get a lot of phone calls um, uh, from Atlanta. You know, California definitely belongs on the list. You know, uh, usually more Southern uh, California. Some crazy things happen. I don't know if you're aware, and it's it's amazing how. Um, you know, all these different venues, Doug, have have different roles in the way they right. the way they do things. Um, you know, when you're in state court in California, I think like in like if you're anywhere like near L.A., um, they assign you to like a court on Friday. It could be like one of eight or nine courts yeah. with different judges and completely different juries, um, mm -hmm. which makes things very difficult uh, yeah. to prepare for uh, as opposed to kind of kind of knowing uh where you're going uh you know number five um shockingly which i thought would be number one mm -hmm. uh cook county illinois right. um now notice this is the only and i want to make sure let me look at my mm -hmm. list everything else is a state okay so so illinois meaning chicago and then st louis are two cities on this list right everything and, else it's yeah. And Philadelphia Common, please. And Common, uh, yes. give, give us Give us some okay. props there. I'm sorry. You know, and, and that's the same thing they do in Philadelphia, yeah. is that they will say, look, uh, you're going to be, you're going to have a trial this month. Yeah. Uh, we'll give you, theoretically, 24 hours notice on that. 
uh, as to when, where, and how on yeah, that. It's but, crazy. Uh, but yeah, and you know, you get some of these, and and some of it's based on reputation. And and I've had discussion both with Philadelphia judges, clients, etc. That you know, everybody says, you know, oh, you know, we want to get to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Philadelphia jury and verdicts are somewhat changing in that degree. And really? it's and it's the a lot of a fair amounts of demographics in Philadelphia, where you have a reduction in union labor. Uh, you have an increase in gentrification. Yeah. So, you know, and, and as one uh, retired judge told me one time, you know, Philadelphia ver- uh, juries are, uh, you know, are known for being more generous than others. But yeah. uh, if you try to pull something on them, they'll punish you. And if you catch the plaintiff oh, yeah. in yeah. trying to, uh, you know, be dishonest or, you know, make them take advantage of them, they, they, they're going to react, ne- you know, extremely negatively on the flip side of that one. To- totally agree. Uh, and, um, you know, living in Chicago for 15 years and yeah. uh, consulting on h- hundreds of cases um, in that area. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. At the same time, none of my clients have been hit for nuclear verdicts because I think yeah. that we did it the right way. Uh, the amount again, right. I think when I mean, Doug, Tom, I mean, when you get a case yeah. and you're in one of these yeah. eight venues, I mean, you have to handle that file differently, right? Well, yeah, you know, I, I handle it pretty much the same way, Bill, but, but here's yeah. the deal. We're, we're, we're going to analyze it differently, okay. you know, because we know the potentials there on that. The, 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 there is a potential detonation there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've got to we've got to go through, work through it just like we would another prepare mm-hmm. in terms of the evidence, you know, but, but at the same time, in terms of our analysis and perhaps for potential settlement and all, We'll reevaluate it because of that. You know, I, I interviewed uh, Rebecca Brewster actually a couple of years ago when uh, their yes. study first came out. And she said, uh, you know, one of the factors is like uh, real estate, location, location, location. Yeah. And that's what it is with these. The the, the mm-hmm. This uh, American Tort Reform Foundation study points to a uh, September 2022 Chamber of Commerce study in which they did a, a review of nuclear verdicts. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they point out that while... Uh, they do it on a state by state basis, but then they point out and drill down within that the number and the high percentage of Pennsylvania that are in Philadelphia, Illinois that are in Cook County, uh, and where you're sitting right now, Bill, yeah. is uh, the the number one state from that study for nuclear verdicts uh, is Florida. Yeah, one day. Yeah, I mean, look at the list. Uh, so uh, the final ranking here, uh, eight is St. Louis. St. Louis is accessible. Um, that's a very, very tough uh, venue. And I think getting worse, I think St. Louis may be working its way up that list. Number seven, Louisiana. Yeah, that whole state. Um, I did several speeches there this year and the defense yeah. attorneys were telling me they have, they, I mean, between the judges and the jurors, I mean, everybody's against them. That's a very, very tough, tough uh, yeah. state to be in. Uh, number six, South Carolina. It says specifically related to asbestos. Uh, I don't do much work in yeah. South Carolina, so I'm not I'm not really sure uh, about that. But but you know, take away this list and something I said uh, I was doing a speech yesterday uh, in Detroit, which I'm shocked is not on this list. Uh, yeah. But I was talking to some uh, folks in Detroit and telling them, you know, nuclear verdicts statistically are very rare. Right. Statistically. Right. Um, and the, the the real financial problem is getting caught up in the nuclear settlement where mm-hmm. you're having your clients having to write a very large check to right. to avoid to avoid right. the courtroom or avoid one of these venues. And um, I don't think that's getting uh, enough attention. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts uh, on that? Because it's not as sexy as nuclear yeah. verdict. Right? And Bill, you've been saying that for years. And I and I agree when, when we did the interviews for the uh, ATA presentation on that, that was one of the big points you raised and something yeah. I've, uh, I've quoted you on going forward on that. It, it is it, it, and it is on both ends of the spectrum. Uh, one of the things that's overlooked uh, it, it doesn't get the press because it doesn't have that headline capacity yep. is the death by a thousand cuts by every company out yep. there. Mm-hmm. The insurance rates in the ATRI studies laid it out. Uh, the insurance rates are going up in order to, you're not going to reduce your premium, but in order to <laughs> slow the increase, you in, you increase your retention, your deductible. Uh, and uh, those either questionable liabilities or no injury cases that the folks on the billboard still take, uh, th- you know, they'll leverage twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars 
for yeah. not entitled to being anything out of these companies. And it's uh, it's the payment in order to avoid the cost of defense. It just perpetuates it. So at the, at the lower end, there's a continuing hemorrhage of these cases on it. Yeah. But yeah, at the, at the upper end, a lot of it is just by avoidance. You know, what yeah. can we, what can we do to, to buy out of this? And, and I think it's a factor of a skewed market. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and one of the things that the Chamber of Commerce study points out is, you know, uh, and, and between that and the ATRI study, there's an ATRI study on insurance that said one of the biggest factors we have now is social inflation. You know, we see the ball players getting, uh, you know, huge salaries, musicians getting huge salaries. We become, uh, you know, just just uh, used to these numbers. Uh, Chamber of Commerce study then compounds that and goes, yeah, then we get these verdicts that most of them or a lot of them are there's never going to be a recovery on them. They're never mm -hmm. going to get paid. But it, it is put out there as if that's the market value of a yeah. verdict against a trucking company. And, th yeah. and that's where a lot of that comes in. And that's a nice transition. Let's transition yeah. to um, um, to the transportation and trucking uh, industry. Right. You and I extraordinarily active in that. Right. Um, what um, as far as the industry goes, um, um, some some updates. Um, we've been very active with the mongoose training. Um, so, so some positive updates. Uh, what I see is uh, many, and I mean many, mm -hmm. um, trucking companies want to start to be proactive Got to. and yeah. they want to be ready for litigation. They want to tie up loose ends uh, on many of these seminars that I do. I'm telling, like I did it yesterday. I'm like, everybody needs to go home today or go to your office. Two things that you're going to look at. First, you're going to go to your website right. <laughs> and everything yeah. I taught you today, you need to yeah. evaluate your website. Number one, exactly. and then number two, you're going to get your internal documents, your policies, yeah. procedures, your training manuals, and really look at those because the language in those two areas are used against you. Um, yeah. Doug, what, what is yeah. your thought? Because one of the questions that comes up constantly is, um, and I have thoughts on this, but I want to get the legal perspective from yeah. you, is somebody in the audience will raise, my, raise their hand and typically it's a, an owner or somebody important in a trucking company. And they'll say, like, why do I have a, 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 a policy and procedure or a training manual that's 75 pages long. Like, yeah. do I really need all this stuff? And, and my yeah. answer is no, but can you kind of handle that from yeah. the, from the legal perspective or why not only is that not necessary, but you're just providing ammunition to your adversary. Yeah, absolutely. It, and I think too many times, Bill, people feel that there's a need to uh, create a document that uh, that is a speaking or that they can wave and say, this is this is what we are, this is what we believe in, et cetera, rather than an effective document to promote safety within the company. Uh, a couple of things, you know, there's a company out there that uh, uh, I heard, I thought it was a great idea. They no longer have a manual. They have six principles. And, That's and all you need. All, <laughs> yeah. And it's almost like if you take, you know, folks in trucking are familiar with the Smith system. Yeah. If you take those over to the safety side and say, look, you do these six things, boom, we're home free. It, yeah. it is easy. It's understandable. Uh, in today's world, Bill, how many people sit down and read the manual? Nobody. I, 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 nobody <laughs> does. It, it, and, you know, uh, I can't tell you how many times safety directors will go, that's in there? No, nah, we don't have that. <laughs> yeah, it's in there on that. Yeah. You know, it, one of the things I spoke to the ATA a couple of years ago <laughs> is maybe what we want to do is look at new ways of conveying this information, short videos for yeah. today's drivers, today's generation. Uh, Hershey Medical School published uh, uh, almost like a uh, graphic novel type of presentation yeah. on that for some other humanities courses. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach that. But yeah, I think what you have to look at is, uh, and, and you and I have talked about this before, safety is ultimately aspirational. Yep. Uh, and the failure the to hit that total, you know, total compliance, total, it, 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 we want to shoot for that, but we still got to do as the best we can on it. And it's totally aspirational. It's It's not doctrinal on that. Yeah. And so I think, I think that's uh, something I've seen um, a, a big shift in everybody getting on, on board um, with that. What, what, th what, th what things are you seeing uh, out there as we uh, jump into 2023 and maybe some of the things and messages that, that you personally want to accomplish uh, in the industry? 
big thing and you hit it on the head it's got to be proactive yes you know we, you oh, know yeah. it's like we started out talking about football season you can win those games in august you know if, if yeah. you if you haven't done the work in august you know when when it comes game great time point. you're not great gonna point. make a difference you know and, and that's what we got to get out there and do reptile theory you know what you're doing with the mongoose theory and getting out there in terms of how to deal with the situations they have and address those is mm-hmm. invaluable to the industry what i think a lot of companies have to do is to look at you know, okay, before the accident, what is it we need to do to get ourselves to eliminate the vulnerabilities? Because yeah. the reptile theory feeds on vulnerabilities. Oh, yeah. And when you go back to the book, you know, if it's just an accident, if there's no systemic failures, it's not going to work. They tell you in the reptile theory book, plaintiff attorney, don't try it. It's not going to work then. So, yeah. I, you know, that's the thing to do is to look for that. There's a lot of people we run into, Bill, that are afraid to look. You know, it's like, gee, if we find it, it's discoverable. It's there. You know, just because you don't look for it doesn't mean the plaintiff's not going to find it. They're giving courses on that. So, you know, you got to get out there and get ahead of the game. Be proactive. It's exactly like you said. I think think that's the theme for 2023. Uh, Let's wrap this up with uh, Blue Wire. Uh, What's going on uh, with, with Blue Wire? I know you guys finished the year uh very strong what's uh what, what's on the horizon for uh, blue wire in 2023 a couple of things glad you asked bill number one you know it's hard to imagine but we're not even a year out with the first product the uh, motor carrier product it's nine yeah. months uh that we've had that to do an analysis use ai use intelligence and look for those vulnerabilities identify them so you can cure them the, the most recent thing and again it's amazing to think this has only uh, been in the market three months is what we call the gap score and we score with public data all 780,000 carriers. Uh, the use wow. in the inquiry from that has come from uh, freight brokers, insurance brokers, captives, uh, groups who are looking at particularly keep an eye in terms of how are members doing, how are my insurers doing, is there slippage there so we can be proactive, get ahead of that. So in both fronts, Blue Wire's been really going and, and things have really taken traction on that. Excellent. Uh, final question, because um, uh, I do talk about the insurance insurance industry a lot during right. my speeches and during this podcast, and I try to keep it factual. Right. Um, and some people get mad at me. I have I have insurance people call me. They go, "You you've nailed it. You you're 100 yeah. percent correct." Just no one wants yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. But what I will say is, I have noticed a shift in the insurance industry. They've kind of woken up. Um, um, a little bit with this proactive, you know, more type right. of model, which kind of goes against the traditional um, yeah. model, you know, which is more of a, a, a cost savings weighted mm-hmm. out model. But yeah, again, the reptile folks and the rest of the planet spars totally take it in advantage uh, of right. that system. I know that you're through Blue Wire uh, and your practice uh, very involved and talkative uh, with the insurance industry. Uh, again, as we approach the new year, what's what's the temperature you're getting from the insurance folks? It, it's coming, Bill. And, and I think they're realizing uh, on both ends of the spectrum. Uh, number one, the nuclear verdicts. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I propound and, you know, it's it's just seems to be, uh, uh, you know, so strange. But insurance companies are coming around. If we have an argument on liability and we've suffered damages, and there's a possibility they're going to drag us into one of those hell holes, sue them first, lock yeah. jurisdiction in where the accident happened, more conservative jurisdiction. Interesting. The flip side of it is also those death by a thousand cuts. Let's get aggressive right after the accident happens. Don't just get the letter of rep, put it in your file, or let them ring the bell on medical damages. Let's push for a pre-suit uh, IME. Uh, you know, there's no loss there. Either they're going to let us do an IME or they're going to deny it. And we put them in a position they've got to explain well, what was the problem? You wouldn't let us examine your person if they're really hurt. Uh, push for early medical bills, early surveillance. Get out there early because as uh, Randy Gilliatt down in Louisiana referred to it, that dark yeah. period where, you know, we're sitting there while they're just building up the bills that are going to yeah. be the basis for them to make a claim on the damages. Mm-hmm. We got to get after them. More insurance companies are realizing getting proactive on that. Good. And anytime I say it's the last question, it's it's never the last question. I, I know. <laughs> but, I know you know what I appreciate it. <laughs> but but this is my last question. Uh, yeah, Doctor yeah. Doctor Steve Wood, oftentimes my co-host uh, on this yeah. podcast. Um, we're going to do a podcast on this topic, and uh, we're also going to uh, author a paper that will be published in Law Three Hundred and Sixty. By the way, big announcement. Uh, Law Three Hundred and Sixty. 
uh, has um, uh, we we now have a uh, an agreement to write for them monthly. So, wow, fantastic! So, uh, Dr. Fantastic. would now be writing monthly for them, absolutely, uh, in a, in a column on litigation psychology. So we're thrilled. Perfect. One of our first articles <laughs> is going to be the concept of confirmation bias. Now, mm -hmm. everybody talks about confirmation bias with jurors, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, and I put this in. I published an article in 2014 on this, and at the end of it, I tagged on two paragraphs to pretty much say, by the way, confirmation bias is a human thing, not a juror yeah. thing, yeah. and it happens with attorneys right. and it happens with claims people right and you see the plaintiff attorney convinced they have a winner when they haven't yeah. really done, they don't have the evidence right the mock jury evidence but they yeah. stick with this stick with it and then they lose right but yeah. then at the same time you have both defense counsel but also what i see is claims people at insurance companies that refuse even after a mock trial or after a focus group we're like yeah. hey listen you're, you're gonna get freaking hammered here yeah they nah. refuse to because yeah. they're emotionally invested yeah tell me about your experience with that and and and, and how you communicate not just well a you looking yeah. in the mirror you looking in the mirror and being radically honest with yourself on right. the case right but then yeah. secondly communicating with your client to make sure they are looking at this thing accurately and not emotionally. Yeah, difficult from both ends of the spectrum, Bill, on that. You know, the, the ones who are just convinced we don't care, we're going to win this thing. My, my job is, I got the greatest job in the world. I, I go to the <laughs> table and, and, and I'm at the table playing with other people's money. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I, I got the house money here. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, my responsibility is to say, look, this is where you're at. This is where I think it's going to come in. And, you know, I, I understand your position. Uh, I'm glad to try the case. That, that's what I'm here for. And that's what I that, that's what I enjoy doing. But just to know to go through this. So I, I am responsible to make sure that they know that, you know, either they're under evaluating the case, there are factors there. You know, yeah, you're right. The facts are on our side, but there's emotion here. You know, somebody was killed yeah. and, and we're going to have the whole family come in here. So, you know, you, you know, we may have it, you know, the flip side is, hey, look, I understand that we're in a certain jurisdiction or I understand we're here, but mm -hmm. but here are the facts. You know, we 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 got a good case. So, you know, maybe there's a potential there, but we can, you know, I think we can hold it down and we got a shot. We got a punch a shot on this thing. So it goes with both ends. My responsibility is to make sure that that I convey it. Yeah. Uh, they might not listen. They might not hear. But, you know, again, you say looking in the mirror. I look in the mirror. I got to make sure that I do that. And I do think the value um, of the mock jury research oh, is a good kind of third party. Hey, you know, let's take our emotion out. Let's yeah. see what people in this venue are yeah. telling us. It, and even beyond that, Bill, it just, uh, you know, my, my last answer to your last question uh, yeah. is, uh, is, is to learn from that mock jury research yeah. and, you know, and say, hey, look, we can change it to, to yeah. get to where you think or what we need to do on it. And that's invaluable on that doug great great bill. to have you as usual. thank you as always bill. take and, care and to our audience uh thank you very much for participating in this episode of the litigation psychology podcast brought to you by courtroom sciences see you